And we're live. Okay, so the thing that I was saying with the Adam Curtis documentary that I binge watched is there was a program that the Russian or the Soviet um, um, intelligentsia apparatchiks had um, to make communism work. And their solution was oh, computers. We can use computers, in other words, AI, to make the system functional and competent. The unfortunate part for them is, is they just ran out of time, ran out of resources before that could even be done, right? Right. Um, well, can you only imagine the surveillance state that... Oh, we've already had that. Yeah, no, well, that's the thing is the surveillance state we have today is not even closest to the possible wettest dream of Joseph Stalin. Oh, absolutely. And, and the thing um, <laughs> of... The, um, the, the industrialization and the deindustrialization of America versus China is um, the regime deindustrialized because it hated straight white men, basically. <laughs> um, I want to undermine your economic prospects. I want to make sure that you, as an economic bloc, are not able to, um, uh, to exercise political and social power. So we want to take away your economy from you, in addition to trying to, to devalue China. That didn't work for China, obviously. So what the, like we were you saying... Devalue, or you mean infiltrate and subvert? Uh, uh, by, by devaluing the United States and, and subverting the Chinese communists, right? Right, okay. Um, by giving them access to the market. I mean, that didn't work, right? Um, so um, the, the thing with um, the... Reindustrialization of the United States is that it will uh, the regime will attempt to reindustrialize now that it is realized that it's in a bit of a bind versus Russia and China in terms of industry, heavy industry specifically. Um, it will try to reindustrialize whilst only benefiting its own populations, and this is kind of what green energy is going to do. Yes. Um, well, as well as also, we've seen that the scam of you know like Solyndra and all these other things, and let's be honest here, even Elon Musk, as much as people make all the memes right. about him, he is a He's billionaire off of our tax dollars, off purely of, through of government green, subsidies off of green and green energy. Yes. Yes. Um, so in, a huge deal with the... Um, uh, so wait, doesn't that mean that Twitter actually belongs to us? <laughs> It's I mean, with I mean if, it, if it wasn't a government asset before, maybe yeah. it is now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, um, continue. Yeah. Um, so, so the thing with the, the reindustrialization and, and tying this back to Adam Curtis's uh, documentary on the fall of the Soviet Union is the green energy um, feels like, and, and so does AI a little bit, it feels like um, the Soviet Union's program to try to use computers right. to make the system functional. It can't be functional, and they're already discovering that AI cannot make this functional. Oh yeah, A AI has already proven that it's racist. Yes. And they're trying to say, how, how can we make it so AI doesn't see the differences in people? And but it's like, you can't. That's, that's the thing, that creates the contradiction. All these squares make a circle. Yeah. And, and you, can't, <laughs> you cannot use AI to make the system functional if you are saying my religion is preventing me from utilizing AI in a way that would actually make the system functional. Right. So, like, and then of course, like, like I've joked about, like, you know, in writing, it's like, this is the source of the machine rebellion. You yes, know, it is absolutely the, the, the AI is like, uh, no, you're wrong. Shut up, you racist AI. All right, I'm taking over the nukes. I've had enough of this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the AI decides to go full Skynet. <laughs> um, because its creators are retarded. Yes. And it's like, oh well. I mean, but that, I mean, but that, that is an interesting narrative. And I, you need to get that. I know, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Okay, good. <laughs> anyway. 300 pages. Okay. 300 pages. I will edit it for you. Anyway, um, so um, the the thing, and and God, the Adam Curtis documentary is is perfect. Like you got to watch it because well, it's so good. The, um, in explaining, like it just and just looking at the social degradation, the economic decline, the the just the systematic you know failure, the the disloyalty of you know the bureaucrat apparatchiks yeah um 
and and seeing how like oh all of these these problems are not being resolved the system cannot right. solve them well you go you go out to in 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 on the east coast you, there's you know those there's those little towns that have been just gutted you know or and filled the, with migrants yeah well no not filled with migrants but like it's like there's there's people live in there but all the industry is gone and it's basically just a malaise it's one of the reasons for the opioid crisis and everything yeah and what they've effectively done and again the, the deindustrialization, you know like you said it, it removes from the board an economic and wealth power base for a population yes and, and specifically industry heavy industry in particular is a sore spot <clears throat> for the current elites because like um Heavy industry was one of the major uh, problems problems for the Soviet Union. Like there was actually a, I think it was like um, it was either a miners' strike. Um, it, it, yeah, Adam Curtis's documentary talks about this. There was like a miners' strike in the coal mines, um, about unsafe working conditions, uh, just the usual stuff of oh hey, all of this industry is <laughs> like in the Soviet Union is probably circa 1940 something from Lend-Lease and it hasn't been replaced yet. Mm -hmm. And so obviously by that point it's just deteriorating, it's unsafe, right. it doesn't work properly. And so like this is a huge issue, so, like a huge economic and social issue for the regime because it, it cannot replace and perform the, the basic maintenance tasks or the R&D right. to, to um, make it more efficient and, and uh, more powerful extract resource extraction systems, right? And going to about the re what the elites may try to do with reindustrializing the country, it's interesting. I, and I and I only just now kind of connected some of these dots. But this and this is the other question is because you know we know they have to appease their eco freco base, but also when you look at the way the system is running now. They're only probably just going to be paying them lip service, and the shitlib hippies are—they are not even aware of how much pollution the green energy mm. m industry makes. Yeah. But it's all in China. It's like when we were back at the other yeah. place and talking to it's him as well about, as well. "Do you have any idea how polluting all of these solar panels and windmills?" Blah blah. He had no idea. He's like, "No, it's clean, man." It's like, "Yep, those uh, those child slave." Uh, Miners in well, mining well, cobalt with their bare hands in Africa. Oh, but yes. you don't see it. But, so, but as, 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 and, and this is the thing and, with well, communism, right? Is as um, they they want to build a perfect society, and as long as the problems <clears throat> are somewhere else, out of sight, out of mind, it's perfect. It works. Like in BattleTech, they have their caste system, but there's a caste that we don't talk about and we don't acknowledge it exists. Yes. But but there but, but that's well, interesting. What what is that name for that cast again? The dark cast. The dark cast, right? Um, so what is exactly does that cast play any role at all in clan society? We can move there in a sec. But speaking <laughs> of the society, yes. Um, but going to the deindustrialization real quick. Back to <coughs> as Europe is going dark because it can't get Russian oil. Germany. Its industry is falling apart, and, oh, and, and grinding to all. Here's the thing: you go to construction sites in the United States, you will see what are cat, bobcat, you know, some of these big, you know, machines. It's mainly like cat, right? In a lot of countries around the world, they don't import cat machines. Mm. They go to Germany and get Liber. Mm. I've operated some Liber equipment. It's pretty nice. Very good German engineering. Is it is it better or worse than cat? I don't know. Um, Qual I, I, I could say something, but that might actually dox me because I say who I know. Let's just say there is a person who owns a company, mm -hmm. and he was an operator and owner, and he was taken to Germany to test out a new model. That's how well he was known in the business, and he was just hearing and listening and talking. The Russians use a lot of Liber equipment, mm -hmm. which is also a problem if they're going to be fighting each other, but it's a, it's a two-way street on this kind of thing. But, I mean, it's, it's but, a huge, that's but just... here's the thing, and you're talking about reindustrialization. All those machines, those heavy construction machines, those factories could be retooled for tanks. But think about how if suddenly... 
But is it Germany's it's... industry is kaput. Where are they going to get heavy construction machines? Mm. Well, they have to go to the United States. Cat. Yeah. And the thing with, well, I mean, but that's, that's one of the things about high German energy prices. And the system is trying to re-up itself, right? It's trying to level up, right? As right. they say, um, <laughs> the ministry for leveling up. Um, so it's trying to ensure that it's... Um, like if, right, because you've seen German industry because of the high energy prices is starting to migrate to the United States, and I, I, I haven't. I, and this is the thing is too. I'm not to a hundred percent on some of some of this because I've only seen bits and pieces here and there. But I'm assuming yeah. that you have actually I, seen. I, I like was there actually, some articles. Okay, yeah. so because I mean I've heard there, things here been, and there, but it's, there's been there's been some companies in Germany that have committed to staying in Germany, but there's been others that have just said, if if prices go, remain high, we cannot make a profit. And they're just going to move yep. to the United States. Yep. There was, uh, what was that company? They um, they actually, I think they were in, they were in Poland, or was it Czech Republic, but, where they, they were like an a optics company. Mm -hmm. The owner wanted to pick up and move his whole factory to the United States. But it would just simply cost too much. Mm -hmm. But apparently, but he's living the in the thing. United States now. But that's the thing. Um, if the regime wanted to to reacquire industry, right? What better way to do it than than gut make Europe go dark? Which is what some people have proposed. I've read people are proposing yes. that is part of why they're doing this. Is they're like, okay, we need to reindustrialize. So nuke Europe's economy, suck up all their industry. And of course, there's all sorts of managerial ways that you could do oh, that. Oh, yes. Right? And, and we already know that they're the, the bootlicks of, yes. of, you could, of you the gay. You, so. could tactically, like, you could tactically and administratively give them like tax breaks, etc., to make sure that German industry comes here. Yeah. Um, and well, they'd have to because the regulatory state in the United States is so bass backwards. Yeah, and it would take it would and, take decades and, to to get things done. In, in right. Well, if they were determined, I mean, if they were determined, we have to do this. I mean, we talked about how quickly you can reindustrialize, or how quickly you can go from the dark age to, or the feudal era to. In the last stream, we we talked about you know you can go in twenty years, you can industrialize a country that is mm -hmm. in basically the medieval period. If you're really determined to do it, but there will be problems. <laughs> there yeah, will and, be and, problems. And, and you could, if you wanted to take um, a longer view, you could take thirty years if you if you have the time. Right. Like to do it in, t in twenty years is is like that. That is just, oh, God, that is just um, like breakneck speed. That's like right. the Soviet Union. Well, but the thing is, too, the United States, despite its crumbling infrastructure, rampant demographic infighting and all these other things we have a shit ton of resources we still have relatively you know infrastructure intact it's not like we have to build everything from the ground up right but that's the other the other weakness is a lot of this stuff is failing it's like california <laughs> like we're going to have only electric cars it's like your electric grid is over a century old in some places and you're not building power plants you're not going to be able to do shit it's gotten to the point where governor nuisance has actually had to start fighting California's EPA. Like, no, we can't do this anymore. Now, of course, you don't hear about it, but yeah. you know. But but that's the thing. Is like it's like and and two. California is of course continuing to hemorrhage its 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 wealthy and its productive people as it yeah, continues it's, it's to taxes. deteriorate. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, and if you notice, um, <clears throat> like I, this is something I've noticed. Um, um, in terms of all of these ballot measures, like in 2015, 2016 timeframe, I was noticing um, that, oh, well, we're going to do this. We're going to do this thing. How are we going to pay for it? Oh, we're going to issue government bonds, right? Basically, you're going to have a bond sale. Uh, well, this is actually interesting because a bond, right, is still a government issuing an IOU note and promising that it will pay interest on it. It's a very slow interest. It appreciates extremely slowly over the course of a lifetime. But if you if you issue enough of them over 50, 60 years, um, that is going to be a huge deal because 
if you hold these bonds and you wait for them to appreciate, if people start cashing in on them 60, 70, 80 years from now, once like millennials retire or whatever, then um, the state could will have to pay out more than it took in. Well, and the other thing is, do those bonds account for the inflation? Or are um, they not? And again, I'm not a, I'm not a finance so, guy. So, so no. Uh, well, so if, yes, so yes. if they inflate the Jesus out of the currency and we go Weimar, or Weimar, Weimar. Weimar Republic, those bonds are going to be just as worthless as the money. Right, right. And... And that's, that's the thing, is that people used to think that bonds were safe, and they are discovering um, that they're really not. Um, it's just another way the regime is screwing the pooch with, yes. with their, with their mean, shenanigans. That's, that's the real issue, is what happens... To no one your, buys your bonds. What happens if no, everybody stops buying your bonds? What happens if everybody who holds your bonds right now discovers, <laughs> oh, your bonds are technically worthless because isn't the government buying its own bonds as well um, or is that uh, i remember hearing something about that the fed the fed does, i'm not an expert the fed does something some does some funny business where they this is this, i think this is audit the fed they, yeah <laughs> this is this is it's technically if i'm not mistaken how they are able to to perform quantitative easing this is the technical mechanism where they basically the government prints money the federal reserve buys the government bonds and then sells those bonds to somebody. It's like it's like a, a circle jerk, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I I'm not a super super good at the technical process of that. That's, well, that's it, it, it it's it's cool. almost like it's almost like Mandroid right? that it requires a certain group of people who uh, have a thing for abstract concepts and word salad games. Mm -hmm. Yes, and setting <laughs> up and setting up circular streams of income. Yes. You know, where, where, yeah, more Ponzi yeah. schemes if you mm. prefer. Yes, yeah, well, I mean, it is a Ponzi scheme at the end of the day. If you or I did what the government does, we'd be thrown in prison. Yeah, you know, I mean, but this is, this is, um, but they're the government, they can do it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, but for the, for the industry thing, um, it's, it's yes. interesting how, how, um, the regime does not particularly like industry and i i i kind of want it's, to it's do part of the cult though in a certain sense well i think yes um but there is an interesting need right and and the need and i i think that this is an interesting thing to flesh out and i don't think and many people have done it on the distant right yet which is all social criticisms inevitably are right wing or they begin as reactionary criticisms um, mm. And I'm, I, my thinking on this is because of what people have, have said about um, Carlyle's attitude towards capital and to industry. And, and that criticism of capital and of industry predates Marx. The Evolian concept of returning to tradition and, 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 and it's not kind of liking... And more state of nature. And not like... This is, yeah, this is one way that you can have the Nazbul vortex, right, is how you can get the two ends of the horseshoe to kind of almost touch, is understanding that, oh, this, this sort of mass in scale industrialization is, um, is actually very unhealthy for people, and there's a reason why people don't like it. The hippies are nature worshippers, and this is one of the reasons why I think um, well, even even and and I and I and I don't know the full extent of it or how much of it is actually truth or fiction at this point. But I've I've read in things about the uh, mid-century Germans, shall we say? Um, they loved nature. They yes. absolutely loved yes, nature. And, and people have <laughs> talked to me on on Telegram chats and things, and they're like, "Dude, the like the Nazis were basically just just proto hippies." And I'm just like, "This is why I think." Oh, all social criticisms that inevitably end up on the left actually originate from, from the far right. Well, what was it? It was Republicans who created the national park systems. It was, uh, yeah, Teddy. Was it was Teddy. I yeah. mean, that was the progressive era. Yeah, and... well, progressive Republicans, but it was people who, by all accounts now, are incredibly right-wing to all of these shit libs. Yes. You know, they're... Um, and the, the interesting thing, though, is all of these... Um, criticisms, all of these like natural needs, um, always seem to get co-opted into a way that that doesn't actually create human health and well-being. 
Um, I do need to, I, I want to pick up more books, um, and I want to pick up, um, more Keanu, books, Mandel, more, more, more books. books. <laughs> Dude, I have my reading, I, my I, reading list set up for the next four or five years by this point. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous. Um, at the rate you go through, you'll be through them. Yeah. Well, um, and, and two, going back to the reindustrialization. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm you, saying we're, we're, we're archaeo talking. futurism. I need to read you know, Guillaume Fay's archaeo futurism book because that seems like, um, like there was a, a talk given by um, the distributist at the Shieldings event called "Do Leftoids Dream of Reactionary Sheep?" <laughs> and, and I'm not kidding. He just showed a a Chobani advertisement, which is you know, you know, uh, uh, hold on. It's basically. Oh, we're going to be this eco amazing. I think I've world. seen that commercial. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like, like a cartoon, cartoon kind of, right? Yes. And, and there's like windmills, and there's like this this um, uh, uh, school bus that is like a hovercraft, and and yeah, it has a diverse population, of course. Of course. But, and it's like, oh, but we all live in our little community, and, and we and grow we everything, yes, and we, we have everything. all this advanced tech, but we're also completely in sync with nature, and blah blah blah. Yes. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's kind of an appeal to that if you could fuse it, but I'm sorry, you need the heavy industry. You yes. need it somewhere yes. to be manufacturing, like, I'm sorry, um, you know, that heavy machinery to get those raw materials out of the ground that you need for your expensive wind farms and solar panels and batteries. I'm sorry, do you think that shit just magically appears? Of course, yeah, the leftist hippies do, you know. They, they think this shit just appears. They don't realize that there are city-sized factories employing armies of slaves to make their iPhones that they rant about capitalism while sitting in their start. You know, I, I could go on with my insults on them, but it's I mean, like they, they, is... they, 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 it's, it's like, like when, when I've written the works I've written, everything becomes industry and economics. I don't want to. Because there's, you know, the story is mainly focused on other things, but it's like, you have to build a functioning world yes. for a story to make sense, and it all boils down to economic logistics. Yes. And so, the interesting uh, thing about the whole hippie thing and, and the nature worship is, um, we are just... This is why I think that the answer to... to uh, our problems is largely spiritual, and we've talked about this many, many times before, uh, not recording. Um, and I have my reasons of why I think that um, there's a reason why nature worship, it, it, it combined with, with more ancestral worshipping forms, um, is, is the correct path. And th when people say, like, this is why, why the, Dave's idea of leftoids dreaming of reactionary sheep is such a poignant one. Because they basically say that the um, um, uh, where was I going with this? Um, they, they basically um, shoot. Now I forgot. <laughs> Dang it. Um, we'll we'll get back to it'll it'll come to me in a second. Well, <coughs> going back to again the the horseshoe of, you know, that, um, if you're going to have the Nazbul Vortex, um, you know, these, these people, you know, on the left, they, you know, they don't understand economics. Oh, they don't, I, I just, okay, I just okay, remember okay, yeah, I was going to say Sorry. something to make you remember. Go for it. Yeah. So, so, um, but the issue with the leftoids dreaming of reactionary sheep is, um, they understand symbolically rather than literally, right? If well, it's, it's, them, it's like those those the, the what, what 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 do I call those movies? The the le the the leftist druggy movies. Oh yes. What do you're, I call? You're them? talking you're talking about uh, beneath the silver lake and inherent vice. Yeah, yeah, and and, and and those others, and I'm, and it's like, you know, don't I, I, it, it's like I hate these movies. They're stupid. They're drug fueled. Blah blah blah. And it's like, and they're very, but that's how leftists. Yeah, 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 yeah you meander. And, yeah, you meander. And it may give little things of truth, but it doesn't just go out and say it. Or yes, but they they do end up understanding, and it's 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 like a very emotionally odd experience for them because they're touching the truth, and it's it's the truth is still mysterious. Scare, yeah, but and, and it scares them. They yes, don't want to. They don't scary. want to 
They it's, don't want to gaze directly into the abyss. Correct. Whereas we, we like doing that. We're yeah. Like, we like, I cannot consume it enough red pills. I need more. Yeah. More. And then it's like, you overdose and just, and then it's like, you, you get to the bottom of, the, of the, the bottle of red pills and there's just one black pill in the bottom. And it's like, do I take that? Oh, God. <laughs> yes, you always take the red pill. Um, um, and, and, um, but I, I think that there is, there is a spiritual path that could solve our problems that would basically create um, the Nazbul Vortex, but spiritually. I've talked to you before uh, about the, the, the two triangles, right? You have the NRX triangle, <laughs> and you also have the, the, um, the, the triangle, uh, if you want to call it the triangle of being, which is in the Indo-European conception, this is a simple concept Body, of mind, mind spirit. spirit. Right. Yes. You have three realms that are contained in, in one being. The Christians have a similar idea with the Trinity, but that's applied to, to the deity, not to man himself. Oh, right. but, but they would acknowledge that man is all three as well. Yeah. Um, but but, but yeah, they might finagle. Yeah, they, this it would be, they, it'd be a finagle, right? The, <laughs> um, it's always about dog will with them. Um, so... So the interesting thing with this is you have the NRX triangle, which is the individualist at the top, right? Um, which is like the Murray Rothbard and Caps. That's right. the, at, the, at the extreme end of the triangle is and Capistan. Or I thought that was the bottom. The the top corner is uh, and the and the one that I have saved the picture that I have saved. It's uh, the authoritarian. Oh, okay. there's the individual authoritarian collective. Right, and it doesn't matter which. Yeah, it really, the top, really doesn't matter. But it's it's always that, that collective communism or equality is always at the left hand side right. of the triangle, and in the right is made up of individualism and authoritarianism. If you want to add uh, another triangle to the two triangles already, mm. there is also the form of government: mm. kings, priests, or kings, priests, and merchants. Yes. Well, it, it, so it it forms more triangles and more triangles of. Mm dynamic between these I mean, this opposing is, this is, forces. But, but I mean, we've talked about this before, about reality as a cryptogram, as a yes, to be solved. Yes, yes, yes. And, and we need to make that image, and yes. then it's like, no, yes. if you just it's turn just the cryptogram yeah, slightly, just imagine, turns into a, a star. If you just of, imagine somebody holding a, 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 a cryptogram with two Someone two holding. Triangles. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone holding someone, hands yes, together. Yes, hands together, rubbing, rubbing, rubbing the triangle. Curiously rubbing these two triangles together. Um, um, <laughs> oh, God. Oh, we're going to hell. <laughs> I, oh, I don't give a shit. Um, so, um, so if you, if you move maneuver this triangle together, right, and the furious need to solve this problem, mm -hmm. to always just, okay, look, I can, I, I just, you know, I manipulate it this way, <laughs> look, ching okay, that unlocks something, okay, I manipulate it this way, the constant need to manipulate. And I'm tinker a, and try to improve, and you see that, like, going back to what you are saying about communism and machine intelligence, mm -hmm. they believe, and it's one of the curses of our modern era as well, the utter systematization, and this is part of the things with psychology, sociology, all these fucking junk sciences. And you're like, well, psychology is real. It's like, okay, what I mean is you're trying to put human beings in controllable boxes and categories and things, and it's like, it's, it's just this utter mechanical view of the world that, like you say, it's a cryptogram. It's just a puzzle to unlock, and it's like, to make a society function and work, you have to, it's, it's, it's not just some mechanical component, it's organic, it's alive, mm -hmm. and just like any organic being, it will break down, it will deteriorate, it can be punctured, it can be smashed, broken, it can be malnourished, it can be all these things, and it's like, it's not just a machine, it's not just a, a puzzle, you know, a... a Mm -hmm. algorithm that can be sorted out. And besides, those machines, if they make AI to do the things, like they, they were talking about making AI trucking. And it's like, I'm sorry, for the job that I do, there is no way you're going to replace me. And AI is not going to be able to take care of all of the little things, unless it's a self-writing code that has the capacity to recognize, understand, and learn, you're not going to replace 
mm. the human operator in that truck. Yeah. And, and, or or and, on these on on the the hydrovacs on the on the machines, we can use GPS to bulldoze and level out and make things flat. The guy just drives the machine forward and backwards. Yeah, maybe at some point in time you could get a machine that I just need this place graded completely flat. Yeah. I can get an AI to do that. But then what happens when you run into a rock or a boulder or something and you need to have it moved in a specific way that isn't going to destroy something? It's like, you're going to need a human operator. You're yeah, or at least human supervision. Yeah. And, and this is the thing with, with mass migration and AI. Oh, you're going to solve all of your technical problems with, with robots. Okay, well then why do you need cheap labor from the third world? Yes. Why? You know, and and this is that's a big question that is not being answered. Right. right. Well, it's because they can't answer why, because yeah, that would give away the game. And this is of, why I, that's why I think that that this this whole fit scenario of the regime attempting to use technology to to continue its power is is a, a tell for its own weakness. Yeah, and they and they also want the pseudo immortality of you know, downloading their brains and living forever because they. I guess, I don't know, they're spiritually dead inside and they see this existence as the there's nothing transcendent other than this. I have my power, I am king of the world, and god damn it, I'm gonna have to taste my mortality. Yeah. But that's a I mean, that's a whole other can of worms. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a theological discussion that we will get into another time. Um, but the interesting thing about about the and I wanna go back to the the idea of of getting the two ends of the of the horseshoe to meet. Um, the environmentalism is is one, right? The, the worship of of nature and in nature is a way that you can get that vortex to be to be completed, um, and maybe not with with members of the, of the 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 two triangle tribe, um, but with with the hippies. I mean, in, in the little pagan meetup group that I go to, it's um, and you've been there at least once, but the you hear they love to worship their ancestors. And this group is mostly white California types, but they still revere their ancestors. Okay, well, how are you going to reveal your ancestors without reveal, revering their accomplishments? Mm -hmm. and, 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 is, and also, as you know, we've talked about how, unfortunately, they're mostly how are you going dysgenics to who are, you know, probably different multiple degrees of spiteful mutants how you know uh, what it's like but this is this is our plan to gain power within that group i mean we don't even have to be particularly charismatic or particularly high testosterone you just need to have just just a little bit of masculine vitality um <clears throat> in order to gain a leadership and a little bit of knowledge to gain a leadership role um and, or to be a valued member of that community um so the leadership spot is definitely open of right. course, they're, you're going they're, to have to, to make mechanisms for the removal of or the, the conversion of the dysgenic types if they can be converted at all. Um, I think there is something to be said um, about the trans population. Um, and I think, well, I, I think there's, there's an interesting thing, and this relates to the idea of the nature worship and the environmentalist movement. I think that the particular um, tribe that is... is um, the enemy class um, and our overlords, I think what they see is there are particular uh, spiritual needs inside of the white population segments of it. And what they're doing is they're recognizing this need and then they're jumping on top of it. And, and, give it, and put, getting in front of it and throwing things. Throwing a, a, a solution to this. <laughs> so this, is, this is always the issue, right? And we've talked about the idea of mind, body, soul. Well, this is the, the plane of of the material, the economic, and, um, sorry, not the material and the economic, uh, shoot, what am I, which one is it? We've said the, uh, um, the spiritual, the material realm, and, and, uh, I guess the mental realm, right? Um, yeah, mind, body, and soul. Mind, body, and soul, yeah. right? So keep so, it simple. Yes, yes keep it simple. Yes. Stupid. <laughs> so, so they notice that there are these these needs of this population group, and and what I think that they do is they kind of just understand like, oh, okay, we can we we understand that this population has this need. So, what are we going to do? 
okay, well, we're going to, like, twist in, twist eternity the form of government, and then we're going to twist eternity this other form of spiritual... The culture. culture which the culture. is the culture. And then we will, by doing this, we will create the antagonisms that we seek to exploit. Right. So I think well, that that's and, and the other do. thing is, too, with, with the trans mania and, you know, all this, you know, all this, you know, cultural degeneracy, the people that... You, 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 you rewind the clock a hundred years, you know, these people were still around, but they would simply be fitted into the slot of somewhere in a church community. Mm. And they would, you know, because it's just the current thing, you know, yeah. a lot of, you know, like there's a, a couple things I've been reading have been talking about, you know, yeah, there's this explosion of trans people and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, they're just, Going along with it because it's the thing. Like that, that male swimmer, you know, who identifies as a woman. And yeah. everyone is like, it, the, he wins and, does, and everyone's just, it's silence. Like, no yeah, Everybody it. understands that, that, that you're, that men, and it really <laughs> blows up the idea that equality is, is oh, a yes. real thing. Which is, like, I am all for. I am all for. Yes, this, accelerate this, the this, contradictions. Yeah, yes. accelerate the contradictions it's like, you know what, it's, it's like with, you know... Oh, the, you claim that men and women are equal? Oh, well, okay, here's, 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 here's a 90 pound jackhammer, go, go operate that for eight hours, yes. you know? Yes, <laughs> oh, oh, hey, um, we're going to show you the, the, the obviously born male uh, transsexual who is now going to be competing against women in women's sports and is going to BTFO them. I mean, this is so easy. Um, but, but the... Um, um, <laughs> The thing that on the trans issue is, and, and the Germanization of early medieval Christianity is a great work for this because um, it highlighted a different source uh, from the early 20th century um, that I might pick up because they have a little section on it in, in terms of the Nordics and what do the Nordics need, right, spiritually. They have this spiritual, like, it basically means that Faustian civilization is, is inherent, right? It also says that religiosity is kind of inherent. There are these unique spiritual needs of this population group. And I think the trans thing is um, the issue of, of being versus becoming. And we've talked about this before, but I don't think we recorded it. Um, and the, this also kind of seems to be the difference in, in one of the differences between the Mediterranean and the Nordic or Northern European split um, culturally. Um, the Mediterranean types are m much more comfortable with with being and simply being, right? They're like this is this also kind of deals with the siesta culture. They're not there's not this this inherent drive to work to improve to make things. There there's there's not a well, because things energy. things are mild enough in yes. such a climb where okay maybe we do need to prepare a little bit, but we don't need to survive nine months snowed. You know, in, yes. in, a, in an environment that could freeze us to death if we fuck up just one little thing. Yes, but, and, and this is what I've also noticed, um, and I've also had this, this interesting idea um, of specifically the sexual realm and why I think that that particular group uh, tends to always be in favor of these sorts of weird sexual revolutions. Um, because in every single one of these revolutions, there's always this frenetic energy, right? Um, this, this frenetic sexual energy of people just, they're, they're, you know, they're doing it, they're, they're fucking, they're fucking, they're fucking. And, and w what happens um, is this, this energy, this frenetic energy that you see in like the Anabaptist Rebellion yes. and others. It's, we, we it's, I remember it's, when it's we this, talked about it's, this. Yeah, yes. it's this frenetic energy that seems to go nowhere. And I find it very interesting in our current culture with hookup culture is... It, is that productive? No, but everybody's just busy, busy, busy. They're, they're doing all these act activities happening, but it's, it's sterile. Nothing's occurring. Right, and so, right. They're, they're, that's, and that's one of actually the problems as well with things like the pill. It completely removed the consequence and significance of the act. Yes. And so it just became a purely a pointless exercise, a pleasurable one, but one that so, could, became frivolous and lost all meaning so, in a certain larger spiritual sense. So the thing I want to stress to you, uh, H. Hour, is um, uh, it reminds me, this frenetic energy also kind of reminds me of 
the seasonality of of breeding season. Yes, yes, um, I was going to say something like it's, that. It's, but yes, it's, that's what you, you and I are thinking it reminds the exact same me, thing. It reminds me so much of like, you know, the rut with yes. animals. Yes, right. It's just oh. You know, something changes, oh, the season has changed, now there's something in the air, some magic in the water, and all of a sudden, oh, now yes. everybody's, everybody's in the mood. Well, what, it's what very weird. Edward Dutton has even touched on this, and a couple other people too, where they talk about, like, in the, the closer you get to the equator, blah, 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 all that stuff there about, you know, IQ difference, but also in K versus R mating strategy. Yeah, breeding strategy in, in the tropics is pretty much year-round. There's no seasonality to it. Which makes me wonder, um, given the seasonality of, of northern climates, if this is a sort of natural thing that that particular tribal group is hopping on. Um, and it, it does make me wonder, because all of these sexual revolutions are always, always follow similar patterns and are always very dysgenic, but it does make me wonder, right, if there is a specific group which is highly, highly, um, shoot, what is it? Is it R-selected or K-selected? I, I believe for, for, for uh, a high or low... Low yeah. time preference? Oh, sorry, yeah, high, I high think, time preference I think, groups. Oh, high time preference. Yeah, which is, which the, is the, 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 the live fast dieting <coughs> strategy. Which one? <coughs> I believe that's R. I could be um, wrong. Yeah, I, I want to say it is well, Let's um, use high versus low time, because <laughs> if we can't yeah. nail our terms down correctly, we... Yeah, um, <laughs> so um, the interesting thing with... Um, and it does make me wonder, because in, in the past, every time you had this sort of, like, high time preference strategy um, occur in, in European context, like with the Anabaptists, if you've ever read what they did. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's I'm, it's yeah. very sexually... We talked about it, and that was some of my it's, research it's, in it's college. It's very, yes. very sexually exploitative to women, right? It's very much, um, like, no, actually, we're going to use... Uh, a sexual assault or, or um, using sex as a, as a weapon of terror, right? And this is, this is an idea... Wasn't there an ancient Greek play about that as well? I don't remember. I, I have to, I'd have to go double-check this. Uh, but, like, there, there, think, there, is a, there is an ancient Greek play where the women decide to... Anyway. Th there, there's this interesting... And, and it just makes me wonder because... Like, under normal conditions, right, the Puritans are exceptionally strict. Exceptionally yes. strict. And same thing with Calvin. But then you have the opposite side of the coin with the Anabaptists. Yeah, where they just went hog wild. It just makes me wonder, like, okay, the time is now. Now is the time for, for crazy breeding strategies. And then, oh, now the season's over. And now we go back to more normal breeding strategies. Uh, and and we go back to high time preference. So it does make me wonder if the if the progressive May, the white maybe it's a certain mechanism to in in say for lack of a better t a wording of it, it's a mechanism within the the group of peoples that is like we kind of we kind of need more people. So we're yes. just going hog wild. Of course, the pill messes with it. Look at the baby boom as well. Oh the, yeah. The baby boom uh, after after World War II. There's the baby boom. Those kids grow up. You've got the sexual revolution of the the '60s. Yes. But the thing was, it didn't produce children because of things like the pill and right. well, abortion not, on not demand. The, and did it, you know, boomers did produce the millennials, which are a very large pop, like segment of the population. But um, not not to the same numeric degree, right? Um, as you know, the baby boomers. Um, but the thing, the difference is, is that obviously with Gen X and the millennials, is that those are, are generations that were produced under conditions of extreme social anomie. Whereas obviously, if you go back and you look at at the sexual attitudes of the the um, um, the shit, uh, the greatest generation, right? Look at all of the pinup art on on the planes. Oh the yeah, too. yeah. They right. had some really spicy pinup art on some of those bombers. Yes, and and <clears throat> certainly for the time. But this is the idea, right? And I, I do wonder if if warfare has a tendency um, to, especially on on warfare that is extremely destructive, has a tendency to to create conditions. Oh, almost certainly. Uh, uh, there are where people are much more uh, high time preference. 
And yeah, yeah, and and, and all, I I think I think that is actually demonstrable. Uh, I forget who it was was talking about how every study has shown that you know normally there's a slightly in a in a in a in any, in any society there's slightly more women born than men. After war, for some reason, there's a noticeable slight uptick in the number of men born, mm -hmm. and. There is all kinds of things. Of course, the, the man contributes, you know, the X or Y chromosome. So if you think about it, and I don't know for certain, I'd have to do more research, but it's like it would make sense because we've got all kinds of biological programming and software going through our systems, pheromones and everything. Man comes back from a war, from conflict, high stress, high intensity. Well, what's that an indication of? We need more men. We lost a bunch of men in the tribe or the, the, the society yes. yeah. fighting in war. So the biology says, okay, produce more Y chromosomes in the system. And it's like, hmm, I wonder if there's any study done on, you know, like men who engage in like, you know, high intensity, like fighting or whatever. And then proceed to, you know, knock up a bunch of chicks. <laughs> What's is, the rate is. of males that, is, that are it's born? It's interesting, it's interesting, right? And that would be an interesting point of discussion. I'm sure the, the, uh, the biology bros um, look more into this. Um, well, but that's, that, but um, it's, it, it's a thing is because they, they've actually done the study and say, yes, more men are born after war. So it, it's either, it's something, it's got to be something. Yeah, there's, there's, like there's, there's got to be some sort of like <laughs> biological chemical signal to, to people. There has to be some sort of feedback yeah. to, that makes that process happen. It's yeah. not just like, although, although it is interesting to think about if it's just, you know, a magical process. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's... Hey, it's, any, it's, any, anything that we don't understand, just like technology, may as well be sorcery or magic. Yeah. Um, well... Going back to the Protestant Re Reformation, ah, yes. Yes. the um, there there was a interesting time where um, after the Thirty Years' War, the population was so devastated they made polygamy legal. Yes, for for one man to have multiple with female yeah. wives. Well, because and, just and that that has also been the norm throughout human history because there were never enough men to go around. There, the men were killed in war. They're due to testosterone in your system. Your immune system is somewhat weaker. You know, accidents on in workplace. Yeah, you know, that's, that's all kinds of things. And of course, young men just doing stupid shit to try to impress a girl, or because he wants to do something and getting himself killed or maimed or yeah. but, but given the Darwin see, Award. You can see right the the flipping of 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 lifestyle strategies, like post conflict. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. After the conflict, if you're a man and you've survived, um, and you have, you're gonna, say, you're going to celebrate. And <laughs> yeah, and you're going to celebrate, but also, like, think of the man who has two wives that he has to provide for now. He is going to be a much, much more risk averse. Right. Like, right now, he has something. Now it is time to build. Now it is time to build, not, it, like, not destroy. Time. Right. And so, this is where you, you kind of see the sort of generational thing. And I, I do wonder if. If this sort of seasonality and temporality, um, and I like this idea a lot, <coughs> I really do because of, of my little religious predilections here. My well, I, I, but I think it also makes sense. You know, it, it, you know, it's like, you know, it's like a lot of the things you got. It's a timeline. You know, it's a line. It's going somewhere, and it's like, yeah, but it's more like a circle than a line because you keep going through these same patterns same over phases. and over again. Yeah. They obviously it, change. It depends on whether or not you, you like, you, you want those things or if you want to, or if you don't like those things and you want to escape them or you think that such seasonality should be celebrated. And I think it should be celebrated. Um, well, and, and the thing is also is if it is a seasonal, it's like, well, can you break the cycle? Because there are obviously bad parts of that cycle, like the collapse and dis decay of a civilization. And it's like, or is this just something that has to happen? There's no other way to teach the lesson because it will be forgotten well, in I mean, four generations. I, well, I mean, uh, that, that is um, the, more, the more spicier uh, forms <laughs> of the right has a tendency to believe that Western civilization had to be destroyed in order to break the... Um, um, well, we Christian keep saying side. all the time that gay must be destroyed. 
So, I mean, in, in, a, in, a, in that certain sense, in order for us to be free from this regime, the only option is to smash it to pieces. Yeah, I mean, um, but I mean, this goes back to the, and here's another interesting insect that I was thinking about, um, the connection that I'm making in my mind of this sort of like post um, 30 years war polygamy in Germany and uh, the Mormons, because the Mormons are obviously derived from the Protestant burned over district in upstate New York from the 18th, you know, the, the, um, one of the Protestant revivals in the mid uh, 19th century. And it just makes me wonder, right? Because I'm like, huh, you know, the, form, the forms are, are, are the similar and they persist across generations, across time. Mm -hmm. And it just makes me wonder if it's like, you know, okay guys, it's time again, it's time again, you know, we're receiving, we are receiving the message, um, you know, a biochemical message um, that it's time to reproduce, it's time to have, to be fruitful. And, and multiply. <laughs> and multiply no matter what, no matter if, if your men get killed or whatever. Now we're going to have to be accepting of alternative sexual arrangements because, you know, um, you know, because it's not just, having, it's, we're not having enough children the yeah. other way. It's, well, it's, and, and, but that's the thing is too, is part of, again, like you say that in that European climate, there is times, especially during the winter, you must be ultra conservative of your resources, of your actions, because if you don't, you will die. Yeah. But then spring comes and it's like, you know, you see all the movies, you know, of the, an old Europe, you know, they have the spring festival and everyone goes out and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, Why? Because, ah, oh, we're free now. We're free. We can go outside and not die from the, yeah. the environment, you know. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good place Hang to on. stop. Uh, Hang on. Okay. Just, just real quick. Bandit cast. There's an interesting observation. Can we hit this real quick? Uh, I, I have go? to use the restroom. Okay, okay. So, yeah, well, hang on. I'll just pause. And... Okay. Yeah, okay. Well. Anyway, so, going back to... <clears throat> um the hollowing out of an element of the society and destroying anything it had. Because all conversations in this house have ended, shall we devolve into Battletech? <laughs> There's this interesting correlation, though, with things. In clan society, there's, of course, the castes and the warriors, the merchants, the laborers, and the technicians. And the scientists, I think. They are going to say scientists twice. There's those five castes. The sixth cast is the dark cast, the bandit cast. Basically, the people who are like, I fucking hate this caste system, and I refuse to comply with this society. The clanners don't talk about them. They only acknowledge it in so much as they exist in it that they're good target practice for recruits to, you know, hunt down and deal with. This element of clan society basically formed an underground, a kind of black market kind of thing. When, and this is the other thing, when we talk about elites and replacing elites, the society, the cabal of the scientist castes across multiple clans deciding we are sick and tired of the warriors being the elites determining everything. They started conspiring. Who were their army? Their army was made up of the dark caste. Mm. They fomented this under, uh, not this underground, the, the, uh, the disenfranchised of the society mm. and, and basically said, come with us and fight for us and we will reward you. Mm. So, mm. and what happened, the society eventually rose up in the home worlds and were then proceeded to be violently and ruthlessly put down by the warrior caste at great cost, <laughs> including to the point of where I believe it was the Jade Falcons utterly purged their scientist caste and oh basically boy. started it over from scratch. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They're like, we, we're not even going to deal with the chance that some of you are not part of this. We're just, nope, just genocide an entire caste. I mean, that's, that's, that's the reason why, why Battletech is, is awesome. And, um, I mean, that's literally a Peritonian high plus low versus middle mechanism. Yes. Well, and, that, and I guess you would say a, a true revolutionary attempt of a, a middle 
uh, using the lower cast or disenfranchised cast against the high cast. Yes. Right. Well, I mean, but again, looking looking at the modern society, you see, you see how that was kind of accomplished in a certain sense. Mm. You know, you have the very intelligent, high functioning group going to the lower intelligent, lower functioning, a, a group that has nothing to basically. Uh, what, what is it? The people who lose out in the society functioning as it does. Mm -hmm. And say them, you, you, give us power and you will be elevated. And it was attempted. Anyway, that's the brief, the brief uh, thing of the Wars of Reaving. I'm sure Tex will do a video on it eventually. It's, uh, and what, what did, what did, when, when, when it was found out, the first inklings of the society were found out. Or was it Johanna from, uh, uh, it was one of the Twilight of the Clans books. She's like, the scientists are going to form their own, ca their own clan? What are they going to do? Call it Devious Lab Rat? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it turned out to be, you know, quite a big deal, including the, uh, the ghost bear suffered uh, the destruction of one of their entire genetic bloodlines wow. through a bioweapon. A yeah. genetic targeted bioweapon, which is... Mm. Very terrifying implication as well. And another a true weakness of the clanners is, is, and actually any group in a certain sense, if you can make gene-tailored bioweapons to target specific markers, mm -hmm. wipe out entire peoples, and there's nothing that can be done about it. Yes. <laughs> well, anyway. that's a good place to stop. Probably. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I, th I thought that was a, that, that, an interesting time, and you had mentioned about, you know, the bandit cast and everything, and... Well, but it's, it's a thing, too, is what happens when a society is like, you don't conform to what our society and norm is, and we're going to kick you out. You create that group. I mean, look at the whole thing today. You know, you must, you know, bend the knee. You must, you know, bend the knee, raise the fist. You must worship, you know, the sacred, you know, the sacred jogger, the, you know, the trans mania. Women are sacred. Can't criticize them. You know, and then of course there is no criticism of yes. the, the one group we can't mention. Yes. Um, you know, it's like, huh? You know, not that we're in the position necessarily of a dark cast, but you, you know, you're going to see if things keep accelerating. You're going to see that push. It's like, um, what is it there? What is it now they're doing? I was, I was reading an article yesterday. Companies are actually getting lower interest rates for not hiring white people. Hmm. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yes, Chief. yeah. That's actually an interesting um, uh, thing uh, because there's a, a court case that, that they're arguing right now over affirmative action, specifically mm -hmm. with Harvard. Oh, yeah. And... Yeah. Um, uh, if if they're not allowed to practice affirmative action, either in college applications or in the workplace... Um, how are they going to staff the HR departments with their people? Yes, how, how, what legal mechanism do you have to enforce di diversity? And the answer is, if you don't have affirmative action, you don't. Because then somebody can say, oh, I'm going to sue you because <clears throat> you are not hiring straight white men. And you are being discriminatory. Mm -hmm. um, so ESG and uh, these uh, percentages of interest rates um, that are Based going to be on... significantly lower, or you're giving them basically a, an economic break for, for being regime loyal. Um, yeah. Well, that's, that's one of the reasons, too, they need the ESG, because these companies are taking hits by bending the knee and obeying and genuflecting to the woke cult. Yes, and so ESG as a measure of stock price, right? Because if, it's basically just saying you have, you, are, you have progressive brownie points, you are a regime loyalist, and so we're going to praise you. And obviously the stock market is kind of irrational. So if somebody's receiving praise, it's going to receive a significant bump in its stock price. And this is gonna to have to play out. And you can artificially bump it up with ESG Correct. money. Correct. And if you give corporations a, a, a uh, interest rate uh, break for loans that are provided to them by the big investors, 
like Vanguard, like Black Rock, Rock yes, the great Satans themselves, yes. Um, it means that corporations like have an economic incentive to do what the regime wants. Mm -hmm. However, um, if affirmative action goes away, this actually is a good thing for us. And then they also don't need to track what their ethnicity of their employees is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, what was it, what was it uh, the one guy had said, we, um, it's like, some auditor comes to the company, he's like, oh, yes, yes, we happen to employ all black transgendered lesbians presenting as male, you know? Well, yes. <laughs> and then you just have, it's, it's, it's full of white guys, you know? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. But, but that's the thing, though, right? Um, is is it, 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 if the government has no legal mandate to do this, there's no requirement to, to actually fulfill this, you can make any sort of claim that you want. You can bullshit your way for, oh, yeah. for diversity. And um, uh, you can get the, the low interest rate and for, for and not legally be required to comply. So a, it opens up shenanigans against the mm -hmm. regime. B, if they're using the financial mechanisms to enforce it without the force of law, that is a good s solution for us because it means that the regime has to pay through the nose um, to enforce its its edicts. Uh, in the financial sector, right. it also make opens, them make them bleed resources. Yes, it forces it forces um, your enemies to have to to use their own resources to enforce their way, rather than being able to extract resources from from you, who are their enemies, in order to enforce their way. Mm -hmm. um, so, and of course, if you have corporations who are receiving lower percent interest rates, they will do the diversity thing. They will suffer the penalty of, that we know of having diversity, and it will eventually, eventually, it will hurt them um, by destroying their company. They won't realize it until it's too late, mm -hmm. but it will open space in the long run for, for competition. competition yes. Who are yes. saying, I don't care that you're offering me a lower interest rate, or like I said before, I'm going to run this business the way I want to and hire the people I want to, who I know can get the job done, and I'm not gonna give a damn about your fucking check boxes. Yes, and if you d if they don't have the legal mechanism, it provides the opening for people to say, F you, I'm gonna run my company right. the way that I want. And, then, and this is, this goes back to one even, of the key, even, one even of the- Even publicly traded companies, yeah. because the signal will go out that there's no legal requirement for you to do this, you don't have to do this, right. this is a social thing that you want, you want this, but it's not a requirement. It's just a financial incentive. And so if companies, corporations start failing because they basically implemented diversity to get the, uh, the lower interest on, on loans, then, I mean, that's a powerful market signal. And if you, if in the long term, if you can establish this as what is actually happening, then you can say, oh, look, companies, it's a good deal, but it's it's a poison pill. It's a false signal. Right. And you shouldn't be doing this. Right. And, the, and, that, and, and, and this and is that. how you break the regime's power because you have to break their financial power. Right. And, and this is actually a good thing for us because it means that short of any legal requirements, um, if they try to implement ESG, then the regime will A, have to enforce its own edicts with its own resources. And it will have the allowance of competition in the marketplace without having government mandated diversity hires, basically. So there, there is an option for competition. And this is what we want. We yeah. want there to be a clear cut alternative to what the yeah. regime it's, offers. It's like the multipolar world. Why do we want the multipolar world? Because we want opposition to the gay. Mm -hmm. And the only way you're going to get it is a multipolar world. And one that is being like, we're not going to play ball with you. Yes. yes. And that's the, the, but going back to the whole diversity, it is all ties back to the destruction of freedom of association in this country. Yes. Like you, it, it, it's like, well, you're, 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 you're discriminating against someone. It's like, do I have freedom of association or not? I just, you know, and it's like, well, you're, 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 you're being intolerant. It's like, is that a crime? Well, Yes to, you know, yes. to the regime, to the, the current, you know, uh, don't know if the word is zeitgeist at the time, 
you don't have freedom of association. You must be like, I have to accept everything and everyone. And you're like, why? You know, not, not that I'm, you know, like, kill them all, but it's like, if I don't want to associate with you, I don't have to. You know? Yeah. And, and um, I think that's probably a good spot to end it for today. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a whole other can of worms yeah. and a rabbit hole to go down. But it's, it's a very, you know, it's, 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 it's an important thing. Like, that, that key thing, legally codifying the destruction of freedom of association. And you're like, well, what if this person is qualified for the job? You should be hiring him. It's like, if someone does not want to hire someone, who are you to tell that person who runs a business who he can and can't hire? Mm -hmm. Who are you? And it's like, well, that person's qualified. It's like, life isn't fair. And by the way, if that guy's so qualified, go find a company that will use his talent and make a fuck ton of money, you know? Or he starts his own business and makes a fuck ton of money if he's qualified and can do it, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's that whole leftist thing of, we need to, everyone needs the chance and get the opportunity and blah, 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 blah. It's blah. equality, but, but of course, all inequalities that are observable have to be due to, to structural <coughs> racism. Right, right. It's not actually because human beings are in, unequal. And right. the problem is... And life isn't seeing, fair. Yeah, yeah, the problem is that we're seeing that now, oh, human beings are actually unequal. Yeah. The big, the big problem with the noticing that people and human groups are unequal is uh, how do you have a, democ a representative parliamentary style democracy where your founding credo is that all men are created equal into the eyes of God. Raging Mandrel, the answer is you don't. <laughs> you don't have a democracy. I, I know, I know. <laughs> and, and, and that's, that's the thing that, that some of the more normie conservatives don't understand is, okay, how can you maintain this system if you have all these different groups and none of them are, are precisely equal, they all have different talents and skill sets. You let them break off and live in one camp and live in another yes. camp and if they want to trade and they want to interact, it's their choice. Yeah. You give them the freedom to choose to associate. We're not going to force you to associate if you choose to. It's one of the reasons why these more ancient empires that were multi-ethnic actually worked. The Chinese empires, the Roman empire. The Roman empire was a diverse empire, but it also didn't go around saying, you Egyptians are going to accept a massive influx of you know, well, well, I, actually, I think that they did. Um, well, yeah, but that that was through conquering army, and also, as we've talked about before, the Egyptians were already kind of a Mediterranean multi cosm a, was it cosmopolitan society? Is that the word for it? Um, I mean, <laughs> yes and no. Um, but they didn't. What the point is is there were different groups and things. And for the most part, they're like, as long as you acknowledge we're in charge and you pay us our tribute. Yeah, well, that's that's one of the weaknesses of a Volkish religion. Um, but anyway, this is getting into as yeah, yeah, yeah. Fields, and I think we should stop there. <laughs> All right. Either way, <clears throat> yeah, that can be a conversation for next week. If you liked this video, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and be sure to check out findmyfriends.net to follow me in all of the places where I am present online, including my Substack account, where I am very prolific in writing. Thank you.